Welcome to the Visual Div. Another episode in. I think we're episode eighteen now, which is pretty cool. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I thought um, you were going to. You can't cut your tongue there for a second. There was a slight pause, very slight pause, <laughs> and then almost made me giggle. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's hard to reinvent an introduction every single time, isn't it? It's like, hey, welcome to the visual div. Hey. Yeah, but it's good. It is what it is. It's a nice welcome. It's joyous. It's yeah. upbeat. <laughs> it is the visual <laughs> div. <laughs> Although you did say once upon a time the visual dev. Yeah. yeah I, I, just, dev. I just forgot that I was on a podcast there and I did a shocked face for anybody listening. <laughs> hey, no, no. We're on, we're on YouTube now. That's true. Not right yeah. now, but we we have a we'll put it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, when people uh, are watching this on YouTube, it will be right now. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Um, anyway, how are you doing, Alien? How are you doing? Yeah, um, overall good. Pretty fucking tired, but overall good. I'm going through a um, bit of a transition with Maven, going from like two naps to one nap. She's kind of sick, and she's just. She's sleeping, but she's doing this thing where she'll only sleep if I'm standing up, like holding her, <laughs> which is... I, I was about to say, do you just stand by her, her bed? Like, she's yeah, yeah. Like, keep, keep standing. No, it's, keep it's standing. like she, she just won't... Um, I just have to like stand up and walk with her, and it's just, it's just hard. It's kind of lovely as well that she wants to sleep on my shoulder all the time, but at four o'clock in the morning, you're kind of like... You're at your wit's end sometimes. So, yeah, it's been, been a tough, that sense, it's like fatigue-wise, tough couple of weeks. But, you know, things are nice <laughs> overall. Well, so, I, yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to raise you there because last night, uh, Paul Wynn, um, so he's slightly older than Maylene. He's, what, two, two, and a, two and a bit now. Um, he's got a like a big chest cold. Ooh. Um, but it only <laughs> related to the standing up. It it only really kicks him when he's lying down. You know how you know you you get the build up on your on your chest of whatever it is the mucus or whatever's making him cough. You know, so um, so he was all right until about midnight. Then I went in, and I just kind of had to get him upright. So I propped up all the all the pillows, got him on me, and then it kind of helped it relieved it a little bit so he went to sleep and then he woke up all crying so i took him downstairs oh. and he and i tried to calm him down he wasn't wouldn't calm down so i put a bit of like gecko on you know the, the cartoon that he loves and um he calmed down then he fell asleep on me again but i i was like i i, I don't sleep upright i can't s sleep when i'm sitting upright <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm worried that I'm going to drop him as well, you know, because I'm I'm holding oh, him tight. Man. Anyway, so yeah, my my. Um... Have you had one of those moments where you're like so tired, standing up with your child, and like you almost open your eyes and go, "I was asleep there." It's kind of like those moments <laughs> yeah. that you've had. Have you ever had a moment where you've just fell asleep for a split second in, on the car in the car, and you're just like, "Oh shit." I, I, you know, really tired motorway driving going, oh, fuck, I need to pull over and get a coffee kind of stuff. I've had a few, like one or two of those moments, you know, stupid o'clock in the morning and she's on your shoulder, maybe on my shoulder and it's just like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> Can you know that moment? Is it in, um, in, in old school when he's like, what just happened? I just came to, what just happened? <laughs> just like... So yeah, I, I get that. Like it's, it's, it, and it, you know, it's one of those things as well that like, I, I, I don't want to talk about it as a negative thing because I know it's going to be, it's not going to last forever. And, you know, 10 or 11, she's going to think I'm an absolute loser. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to have these moments, but it's, you do, you are only human at four o'clock in the morning or <laughs> half three in the morning as it was thinking, ah, I've had two and a half hours sleep and I might as well get ready for work now. <laughs> but yeah, it's that constant. Well, well, like, so, so we used to, when, when was, well, when, when was maybe his age, we, you, you can double team it. So we would, you know, one night, if it happened a couple of nights in a row, you know, you'd, you'd swap. So Aoife would do one night and then I'd get my sleep in. And, but now we have Shamey as well. Who's, who's coming on six months. It means that Aoife's on Shamey duty every night. 
and then that means I'm on wind duty every night. So if there's any kind of consistency of disruption, you're both getting hammered mm. by by no sleep, and that just it manifests itself in it manifests itself in you know getting narky with each other, and it just like oh, you have to be so careful, like because oh, both people we, are just trying to do like no one, everyone's just trying to do what they think is right, and then it's just like. I don't know, like a teddy bear could move out of place and you're just like, <laughs> you teddy bear, you're so good. <laughs> you know, and you're like, yeah, you have to be very careful because like just with fatigue and a bit of frustration and even sometimes not knowing, like I we do the same thing every night, but tonight it doesn't work for some oh. reason. You know, it's like, why, why does this not work? And it worked yesterday. And then the next day it works. It's like, why did it work now and not yesterday? <laughs> You know, so even those kind of things that you think you have it and then you don't, but then you think it's everything is up the swanee, like, and then things are lovely again. So it's it's just so, it, it's a it's a funny, uh, unusual. It's just something I've never experienced it. I suppose that's the thing. Yeah, but you have to. Well, we we um we find a con- common enemy, and I I say enemy in the loosest sense, but we we are on you know we're on our, our family WhatsApp groups and. My sister has, bless her, she's, she's, a, she's a very good parent. She had three kids. Um, I'm, my brother has two kids. And so we're a little bit behind in terms of, you know, we get all the advice flung at us. You know, if, if, if someone's ill, this is what you should do. And this morning, it was brilliant. It was like, right, wind's a bit chesty. So it's like, right, you need one of these plug-in devices to stick in the wall, like, like the, the Vix thing, okay? And that was great. And, like, Aoife and I were like, yeah, we've got one of those. We should just do it tonight, okay? And then the next bit is you should rub Vicks in in their feet. I'm like, so we are, we are pissing ourselves laughing, going, what the hell is rubbing Vicks in someone, in a baby's feet going to do? spicy and slippy feet so they can't go anywhere. <laughs> tingly, exactly. tingly slips. <laughs> you know, it, it massively helps their airways because, you know, if you rub stuff in their feet, it obviously gets in their lungs and their airways somehow. Anyway, so then we become we become joined up and we become the the common, we have a common laugh about my sister going, rub it in their feet. We're like, my sister's, she's she's on something because, so it, it like you need moments like that where there's this little common thing that you, gather around and it kind of breaks the ice and it means that you don't get on each other's nerves and and but yeah do you know we, where that one yeah. came from like your sister was awake at three o'clock in the morning for the 11th night in a row and she'd given up all hope and everything else that worked and there was a, a tub of wicks right beside her and she just rubbed it on her child's feet and for some reason that baby fell asleep and she's just like well, that's it yeah that's, we that's the magic cure so yeah. like i'm sticking with it <laughs> Well, I, so... I do that. I do that with Win now. He has he has a little um, little elephant teddy, and a little little rabbit. Okay, and every night I I have to make sure he doesn't care. I have to make sure I say, "Hey, where's Teddy?" I'll give him a kiss, and I give Rabbit a kiss. And if I don't do that, I feel like the the routine's out of order, and he's not going to sleep. Whereas if I do do it, he's going to sleep. We know that that doesn't make any difference, but I I in my head it's like. Aoife, have you, have you given Rabbit a kiss? Because that will make sure that Wynn sleeps tonight, you know? Oh, so. my God. The amount of those <laughs> routines that, like, I've made in my head and we have to stick to this routine. And, you know, maybe that routine was never stuck with over the last week. But if it, but tonight when something doesn't go awry, it's like, the routine! You didn't <laughs> stick to the routine! <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose in the same way that you're you're lo- looking, for, you're, you're saying about a common enemy, you're looking also for, like, a common path that works but yeah i think we said it before like you're you're growing a human <laughs> like it's not, there's nothing there's nothing like regimented about that <laughs> so actually on on that one like i've got this um so last june or something i went on a boat trip in indonesia with a group of lads on a surf trip and i came back with this indonesian um music book where you like push buttons and it plays music and it's, you know, 10 pages, like a little, little drawings in it. I've no idea what it's saying. It's like these Indonesian nursery rhymes, but there's one of them in there. That's definitely about sleeping. And that's the one that I, you know, hang my hat on. That's what gets Mavian to sleep. And the bloody book is breaking. <laughs> so, 
So it's like it's not working and then it works or it only plays half. So so that that like that routine that I have is like I can see it. I can see the end. And it's just like it's such a terrifying day when this book actually gives up. <laughs> oh. I tell you, we, we had that with with the teddy, with the elephant teddy, is we, we bought we got a gift of this elephant teddy and brilliant. He loves it, you know, and he was taking it to bed. And then one day we came back and it's gone. And we realized that he'd taken it to the park with him in the in the buggy. Oh, no. So he'd lost it. He'd lost it. So Aoife's straight on Facebook going, guys, anyone, you know, on the community groups going, anyone see yeah, yeah. We, it's like an elephant, but it's like this, but it's not really like this. And we, we, and we couldn't find it anywhere on any of the shops or anything. And then one person popped up and we all gathered, you know, we gathered around the laptop going, whoa, whoa, whoa someone's found it. She's like, I haven't found it, but I've got one of those exact teddies. No. Um, we don't That's need us. it anymore. And I had to, I had to walk 40 minutes the, the next day because Ethan had the car. I had to walk 40 minutes with the dog go up to this front door where she'd left it outside. So I had to go, I, I went and bought some chocolates, like some thank you chocolates. And yeah. just, I put the chocolates into the bag and took this little teddy out of the bag and went on my, on my merry way in the middle of this estate that I'd never been to before. That, it meant so much to us because then that evening it was like, haha, we have elephant. Yeah, yeah. And, and your dog you're, is delighted. He's been on an hour and a half walk. <laughs> yeah, he he was brilliant. He 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 marked his territory all the way there and back. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to have to do that with your Indonesian music book. You're going to oh somehow. God, yeah. Has yeah. anybody else been on a boat trip to Indonesia in the last twelve <laughs> months and has purchased this book, but it has not given it to a toddler? Because <laughs> that's the other thing is that like Mavine has figured out that she can, you know, she claps and she puts things together and. But she's also figured out that she can pull things apart now. <laughs> so pages of books, rip. My glasses. <laughs> she took my glasses yesterday. And normally she plays with them and shoves them in her mouth. But she got each end of the glasses yesterday and was just like, he man. You know, like Hulk Hogan ripping up his <laughs> his vest. And I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> I need those for everything. <laughs> the poor thing was just like looking at me. <laughs> she was like, what? What's happened to dad? <laughs> and it's like, you don't understand. I need these. <laughs> I'm literally bumping into doors if I don't have them. <laughs> yeah, you give. So what you do, you give them, you give them Vanessa's glasses. It's like, yeah, I, I don't, or buy yeah. fake glasses. Or maybe I should yeah. stop being stingy and just buy new glasses and give her mine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, enough about the toddlers. Well, you can never get too much about the toddlers, but it should be a toddler um, cast. <laughs> to toddler cast. <laughs> we'll get we'll get Win and maybe, and they'll they'll do their own. Uh, they'll do like um, behind the scenes episodes of the visual div. What what actually happens? What what, what do their what do they the hosts actually get up to? It's like your swan analogy. You know everything is everything's fine up here, and then underneath it's just a load of toddlers <laughs> <laughs> driving things in all directions. <laughs> it is. It is. You just yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, we um, what are we going to talk about today? We we actually put a tweet out this morning. Um, cause we don't really know what we're going to talk about before we press record, but the tweet was asking. Yeah, so the interesting thing about that tweet is that kind of, uh, I, there was something that I wanted to chat about and it kind of fits in. Yeah. Kind of. So this, so we put a tweet out that said, um, we're recording this morning. Let us know if there's any, any subjects to talk about. And we had two, two people reply, which is, it's always good. So Fraser McLeod, um, from based down in, in by Oslo. the way what a yeah. name he sounds like a prop from scotland he well yeah i guess he does Imagine yeah. like fraser mcleod is, is a tight head but it's, prop, Fra it's like... fraser fraser with a z not fraser with an s so slight slight tweak so he's like an american scottish prop <laughs> a linebacker <laughs> yeah but i not i actually spoke to Sorry, I, I spoke to fraser um before and he's such a cool dude he's like he's um building basically we're going to get him on to the pod because we um he's going to take us through his no code um he's he's a he's a proper no coder anyway we're, we're going on tangents here this is this is going to be the tangent podcast right so so fraser asked us to do a segment on cool shit that maybe this week both of us have one thing that we've found really cool 
whether it's a clonable code snippet, some tool, anything, anything related. So we're going to go on to that one. Um, and then Felix Means, um, he jumped on a tweet by Dan Petty. And Dan Petty's tweet was, you'll never fully reach your financial potential if you keep charging hourly. <laughs> and yeah, interesting. You know, obviously, it's a bit, bit clickbait there, but... Um, Just a bit? Just a bit. We like clickbait. We like quick clickbait. Um, but Felix replied, said, would love to ditch hourly completely, but I still haven't found a good way to have monthly retainers that aren't based on the number of hours. I thought, bang, that's, that's a great point. Anyway, Felix asked us to maybe touch on that. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go after the pricing one quickly first. We did say that this could be a two-hour podcast talking about pricing. So we're going to try and cap it at 10 minutes for this segment. So, Aline, what are your thoughts? Can you ditch hourly billing completely? And if you, if you can, what's the best way to go about it? Um, do, you, hours, do hours have to make up part of the pricing conversation or can you completely ditch hours and present it in a completely different way and reach the financial potential that Dan Petty's talking about? Um, I don't... Uh, I, I think it's too simple, that particular tweet. That's why. Like, that's why I'm asking you the big questions. You've got to. You've got to make it make too, it complex. And I, for us. I'll give a. I'll give a very basic example. Um, fucking solicitors and lawyers, they charge hourly and they reach their fucking financial potential. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's an example of another industry where people charge a lot of money per hour and they do really really well. I think the thing that, um, what Dan. I'm like I'm projecting here what he's trying to get people out of the idea is like charging you know your, your, your an hourly rate that you would if you were an employee whereas I think that's probably true if you're if you're going down the route of charging an employee hourly rate then you're then what's the point in being in a business or having a business like a freelancer is a business I think um you know we're not um yeah it is a business so you need to think more of how much do you want to pay yourself plus how much does your business want to profit? And then what are the expenses and what are the, um, I suppose, wiggle room if shit goes wrong. And that's, that's where people come up with, you know, project prices. And um, so there, there is also the concept out there of value-based pricing, which um, I, I honestly don't agree with it, but it's based, based off of the value the, the the size of the company that comes to you, you you price accordingly, which is, in my opinion, I don't I don't agree with that, um because what that tends to do is that everybody thinks they're pitching towards Coca Cola and they're pitching themselves out of, out of other prices, out of other projects or projects Ooh, that are. I yeah see I think value based pricing isn't based on the size of a company. It's based on, the idea that you can calculate the value of what you're building, in relation to the company. And therefore, yeah, well, like, I'm, I'm going back to like what I've seen with like Christo and his his primary his his example that he always, that you know it's a long time since I've seen a Christo video, but his example is like you give a price, they say, oh, I don't I don't agree with that price, and then you go, well, what vehicle did you drive here in? Oh, I turned up in a BMW. Well, if you're driving a BMW, you want BMW standard products, so these are the price of BMW. You know, it's that kind of psychological warfare, which. Is like cool if you want to go down that route and 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 if you have that skill, go for it. But I don't, I don't, I don't have that skill, so I've never had the the confidence, maybe, or been kind of like thinking it's a bit weird. But I've 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 priced hourly and I've priced project, and I've priced retainer based on monthly retainers and stuff. Um, but usually it always comes down to how much. Do I want to get paid? Plus, how much do I want my business to profit? Plus, how much are my expenses? Plus, a wiggle room, and whether that's a project-based price or reduced then to an hourly price, it's it, that's always how I kind of calculate things. Yeah, see, I'm I'm very similar, I think, and I think Felix makes a great point: is that what he's probably getting at is that um, 
time time is something that exists for all of us in the same same realm so one hour is one hour right? it doesn't matter where in the world you are or what you're doing one hour equals one hour so it, it, it's a standardization in the same way that a currency is standardized to a certain extent in in the country that you live in and you know obviously we so when you combine a price with a time you get a standard um and it's it's easy to do comparisons then um so regardless of whether you um price per project or per hour or per day or per month there's often on one side of the equation there's often uh, a boiling down to how much is my time how much am i charging my time out for and it comes down to an hour like you mentioned lawyers they they go down to six minute increments which is crazy but that's maybe because they're doing a lot of phone call stuff and you know i've got i've got friends who you know the phone picks up answer the phone who is it they press the timer on that client and off they go and mm. if you use three minutes of that time they charge you six minutes if you use seven minutes of the time they charge you for 12 minutes and it that, that's a system but it's a standard across the industry which makes it easy for people to to buy into and also hard for customers to to not kind of abide by i guess um but it's a standard so it allows everyone to compare apples with apples i guess we're, what dan is maybe saying is that um you don't want to give away your hourly price because it, it removes the flexibility for you to do things more quickly i.e more efficiently for the same price so and that that comes down to this um i remember reading someone years ago and they they started off and they like i don't know say say let's take a, a building a web page okay so in year one they've only just started to learn how to build this web page and it's got a three sections you know a couple of headers a couple of images and out bar and a footer okay and so they go right i'm going to charge ten dollars an hour to build this and it takes them 10 hours so there you go you've got you've got your what's that a thousand a thousand dollars to to um 10 by 10 10 by 100 um this is why i don't price hourly <laughs> <laughs> So it takes them a hundred hours, two two big weeks, so they're charging no, a thousand. Exactly. Bucks. No. So it, it um we're gonna charge them a hundred hundred dollars to do this, okay? And it's gonna take me ten hours, and so therefore I'm getting ten ten dollars an hour. Now, five years later, I'm building exactly the same web page, but because I'm better at doing that, I can do that web page in one hour. So instead of charging ten dollars an hour, which is what the client paid five years ago. I'm now charging one hundred dollars an hour, so the client is getting exactly the same outcome. I'm giving them exactly the same skill set in terms of I've built them a page, exactly the same output, and they're paying exactly the same price. But it just happens that I'm controlling the time element and saying that now I can do in the same space as I did one one web page. Five years ago, I can now do ten web pages in the same time, and therefore earn ten times as much. But I guess that's what it boils down to: is when you take hourly an hourly price out of the equation for the client, you can drive efficiencies at your end to make your pay per hour higher. Um, so, regardless of how it boils down to it on an hourly basis, I think what Dan is probably getting at is try and move the conversation to not necessarily value-based because i think value-based you alluded to it but value-based is very hard to it's very hard to do it doesn't matter i think it maybe works every so often but none of my clients i could go you know what you're making 20 grand off this course so i'm gonna charge you 10 percent of that you know um it's i i now do page-based pricing so i look at a page and go that's gonna take me five hours and I want to add the profit and I want to make sure the cost and I want to build in kind of overruns and meetings and debates and discussions and all that, all the stuff that comes with building this page. I want to build it into a price and I'm happy with that. And that price was 500 a page. Now, two years ago, the same price was 500 a page. It's just I know now, now know I can do three of those pages in a day, whereas five years ago, I could only do one of those pages. 
So I'm benefiting from being better and quicker and more efficient. The client is paying the same stuff. And that, this that's... is super interesting because, uh, and this is why I was like, this, this chat could go on forever. And this is where um, the unlimited inverted commas access or unlimited subscription models can be both beneficial towards the client and the user because it's a fixed price based on outcomes and based on your skill set, then you can have more clients and that's how you can do quite well with it. Um, so it's, it's a kind of the same thing there. You're, you're charging. If you're well, not good enough, look, just hear me out. If you're, if you're not good enough, you shouldn't have more than a certain amount of clients because you need to service that one client. But then when you get better and more efficient, then you can add a second client or a third client. It's kind of what you're saying by a price per page model. You can you can do that as well with a fixed price retainer based on outcomes. And I know I use the word unlimited, but basically that's what those unlimited con um, retainer models are. It's a fixed price per month with, uh, with outcomes, with a certain amount of outcomes. Um, and that's and, and yeah. based on based on how your skills evolve. But for example, this this will segue perfectly into cool shit that we we did this week. So this week I have set up uh, right. CMA. Hey, remember, I'm the segue. I'm the segue guy. I'm the host here. No, so I'm, I'm segue this time. I'm going <laughs> off beast. But so this week, cool thing that I did is Webflow hosted CMS audio, um. Uh, audio testimonials. So the content is the the audio is hosted in Webflow. It's CMS based, so that they can reproduce this, and and it's um, an audio, an audio snippet that's hidden with JavaScript and click functionality and a custom um, progress bar. So I built that this week, and a couple of years ago I built something similar, but it didn't have the progress bar. It was a click function, a click function audio. Um, a custom button to trigger an audio. Um, so now that I've done two of those, I could do another one in minutes. I can do that now in minutes. But it took me it took me quite a while to figure it out and to learn it and to to research it. But the client is still getting charged the same amount. But the next client, actually, and this client got charged. You know, I made more money off this client than the last one. And if I have another client in the future that wants the same thing, I'll make more money because I'm better at it. So that's kind of, yeah, your price per outcome is the way I would kind of think of it. But then you're going down this route of, Jesus, will this outcome ever end? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're just working for free. But but I think like just just to kind of finish off on, on Felix's question, I think I, I don't think there's an easy answer because... Whether you price per outcome or not um, is kind of not relevant really to the to the retainers or the traditional retainers that the clients have. You know, when when I'm presenting retainers, um, re retainers tend to be is you know two thousand dollars for twenty hours of your time, and the reason you do twenty hours, you could do uh, three days. But the reason you do 20 hours is because it gives a little bit more flexibility to do two hours on one day and five hours on the next day and and give the client fit that feeling of flexibility that they can use you when they need to use you. Um, but at the end of the day, you give them a price and put number of hours, that's an hourly price. So I'm not sure there is a way to get away from charging hourly. I think if you had a project um, that required you to do some work i think yes you should avoid where possible charging per hour you should charge on a on an outcome level but we're in the business of one launching building products but also two being client partners and when you're so then, a client partner and then, you need you need to give that standard and i think felix is right you, i don't think you can get away from having an hourly an hourly reference point you know See, and, and that this is where, like, obviously we we we've we've disagreed on this in the past. It's like we've both just discussed that as your skill set gets better, that hour becomes more less valuable to you and more valuable to the the client, which is fine. But then you know you know this CMS audio 
solution, sh that, that, that in itself has value as opposed to it being now that I can do it in half an hour as opposed to doing it four hours that someone else could get it cheaper. So that's kind of why I prefer the um, give me a task today. It'll either be done tomorrow, three days or next week based on complexity. And you have full access to me, but we have you have to be realistic that you want um, something super complex. It's going to take me a week. You want something super simple. We'll have it done by tomorrow. And and then, you know, maybe the next time they ask for that complex thing, it's like, ah, I'm better at it. It'll be done in three days, you know, or I've done this before. So that 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 would. And also, I'm I'm really bad at timekeeping. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's kind of why I prefer this other, you know, the outcome based. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I but I th I think if you tweak this slightly, I think you get to a better medium. So, wind back. This is this is actual how I did it. Wind back uh, two years, and when I said I'll charge you for a day, I would work for for a day, and because I felt that this is what I could do in a day. Now wind on two years. When I say to a client a day, because I've worked with them before. This is how much I charge for a day. I know that my output for that day is now twice, probably three times what it used to be. But they're still getting the the perceived output that I'm working on a problem or a build or or a something that they need that will take me about a day. Now, for them, that just gives them a comfort blanket of standards. Of, mm. I'm yeah, I get that. But actually, yeah. But I I I now sell my time as every day is two days so i will sell two days of time that fit in in a day and that's not that's not um smoke and mirrors for anyone that is a case of just giving the client what they need which is standardization and ability for them to evaluate the price but also for me to to play up to my efficiencies of doing things much more quickly and better and without touching on this sort of the outcome stuff that I would do, say, with a with a project. So I think there is a way to do it, but you just have to... I'm not saying be sneaky. I'm just saying be yeah, no, I, I get a little you. bit more creative. Again, and they they like appreciate this, it, you know? It's this like, comes down to, like, this is... And even when we had the Kerfuffle 101 about, um, you know, unlimited retainers and stuff, it, it comes down to the comms, like your comms which you're with your client and whichever way you call it, like if it's a day, if it's an hour, if it's unlimited, if it's a week, if it's, you know, a three month project, whatever that is, it's, it's clear communication. It's making sure that they get what they want when they expect it and, you know, not, you know, missing deadlines or what, what's that over promising and under delivering <laughs> or, yeah. you know, you, you know, not doing that. So, yeah, it's it's tough, but um, the the thing that always kind of gets me is ah well I suppose go back to it no and I'm, again like I'm I'm moving in a different direction but any contracts that I ever had it was like this was the project this is how much the project costs this is how many meetings are included in the project everything was like so so clear um it was like so like incredibly detailed the contracts that we we got written up and then in it was if we go past this deadline and it's because of the client's fault this is how much per day it's going to cost if we have to have another meeting because of x y and z reasons this is how much it is per meeting so and this again like contracts are just communication yeah they're just contracts are complicated because when there's a problem things can be solved simply and maybe that's kind of the the actually that's the one of the things that i have found to help me the most is that price project the same that i said how much do i want to make how much do i want to profit how much are my expenses what's the wiggle room give that to the client put it into a contract how much is extra work how much is your hourly rate how much is your day rate how much is an additional meeting um and then I give it to a project manager <laughs> and, I can, 
So it's, but, but all of this is the complexities of a business as opposed to, and this is why I don't like the word freelancer because we're businesses. When it's freelancer, it makes us feel, makes me feel individualist and, in, and, and on my own. And as I, I always say, there's super out, heroes out there, fair play to them, but I'm more, I prefer working in a team. And even if that team has, you know, does things different to me and there's frictions or whatever, I like working in a team and I like having people who are better than me doing shit that I'm not good at. So yeah, maybe the I, next thing I need to do is get a someone for pricing. <laughs> yeah. A pricing manager. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. But just to, to finish off on this, I think one, I don't know how to say it. Maybe it's a trick or just a technique, a technique that I've found really good is to just think about your um, getting the tools out of your toolbox cost. So what oh, yeah. this means, yeah. and it's, it's often called, you know, related to switching costs. It's like, if you do an hour here, an hour there, an hour there, like, I think uh, it was at Kyle from Webflow yesterday put a tweet out, which was about when you book a meeting into someone's diary, there's like a, there's like a fallout before and after where one before the meeting, you're thinking about the meeting and after the meeting, you're thinking about the meeting and you can't necessarily do good work in, in that after the meeting before and after and it, and it's the same with any charging of a client it's like i i always used to go right you can have 20 hours a month but please we'll do a block of four so we'll do a block of four so it's not about forcing the client to take a block of four every time it's almost like the lawyers do and say if you get 30 seconds of my time I've had to pick the phone up. I've had to start the clock. I've had to do the admin. I've had to do all this kind of stuff. I've had to get my tools out of the box. So I'm going to charge you for six minutes. Whereas with, with, in our world, we go, okay, well, we're going to have to open up the file, check what we're doing. We're going to have to invoice for it. We have to, all those business costs. So you have to come up with a, a limit that you're happy with. And I, I tended to go with four hours and clients would then spend a week of thinking of bug fixes and they'd, and I'd say, okay, well, that's four hours and I'm going to do it on Tuesday. Off you go. And then you kind of, you're helping them manage the project a little bit, manage the cost, but also you're just helping yourself not lose out by doing an hourly, an hourly work and an hourly billing. So um, anyway, enough on pricing. Cool shit. You mentioned cool shit, but what is your piece of cool shit that, um, that we can tell Fraser about? Um, so that was one, one thing. One thing you're not allowed. <laughs> lots of things. I know you've got lots of things, Aline. Oh, one, one fuck. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing you in. Um, bullshit is every day. I'm working with the Webflow custom attributes, and that is so powerful. It is so powerful to be able to manipulate data, manipulate Webflow. Um, use htmx even this um that that particular like that uh, audio custom audio player that i made uses attributes um so it's it's working with attributes that's the cool shit there's so much like potential with them what, what are people... attributes can you just explain what attributes are to, to folks that maybe here here it banded around quite a lot but don't really get what attributes are and what they can be useful so I, I suppose like an id is an attribute a source is an attribute um a href is an attribute is They're a class all class an attribute no it is yeah yeah but it's in in the webflow sense though it's not they're not they're not in the same place so you, you put your class in the class selector in the top right you go into settings and you've got your id and you can put in your id up there and then you go down to the bottom of that settings panel and then there's this two little inputs under a dropdown called custom attributes. And you can, as you've, you can put in whatever you want in there. And the top one is usually you put in like a, a word. And then the second one, you put in another word. And that's, um, so it's, it, it, when it, it's um, published, it has inverted commas around it. And it ends up being word equals inverted commas word. So, so without like, I think you've gone to explaining it to the toddlers, but let's move on to like the 10 year olds. Maybe it's a, 
<laughs> it's a word plus a word with yeah, brackets. Well, it's a key value pair in in the in the real world, isn't it? It's a key, yeah. It, it's a yeah. It's, it's a thing that has a value, and you can change the value of that thing. You can. Yeah. And... So it's like col a color equals red is a is a key value pair. So it's the, the, and this yeah. is really interesting. This is why it's so cool. So you're thinking about it in a different way to I am, and you did a video. Um, yesterday, I think, and you put it up on YouTube about how you use custom attributes, but I'm using them in a completely different way. And this is why it's so cool. So the the way that web floors are introduced to custom attributes is usually through something like Outseta or member stack. And now Wiz use custom attributes massively. So like um, member stack, for example, always has like, I think it's data MS member equals something or data MS member equals profile and that what what their code is that that snippet you put on onto your webflow project looks for that data ms attribute and then the, the the pair that's in the inverted commas does something it either pulls your name and puts it into a, a place it either it's added to an input so that you can send data over to member stack um, it can be used for your your sign up form or your your um, your profile form. So, it, so that that was the first time that I'd say a lot of people were introduced to custom attributes, and and outside of something similar, and now member stack have kind of taken it to the next level where you can use the the whiz attribute to to trigger all sorts of custom functionality. So, what I've been doing using it a lot for is using HTMX because HTMX is a JavaScript front end library essentially that uses the, that pulls Ajax requests, but it uses attributes and it's all about keeping the functionality local in the HTML, which as Webflow developers, we, we design and develop on a visual canvas but it's HTML and CSS. So it pulls the kind of mystery out of having a, a JavaScript library hidden somewhere in the background doing magic. Whereas if you, so the, the, the custom attribute kind of, it, it, it allows you explore that functionality. So in, in a kind of traditional JavaScript sense, more often you're targeting an ID and the ID is, for example, you're trying to change the color of a button, you're going, uh, you're writing a script that says on click, find this ID and trigger a color change or trigger an action, which is, which is awesome. But you can also trigger that functionality on, an, on a custom attribute, which could be button color change equals red or something, or you can, you can have that logic written in. So the, what I, what is super cool about it as well is that the way that the attribute, the custom attribute can sync then with your, um, with your Webflow CMS content. So what I've started doing, what I've been doing for a long time now, and, and this particular audio one is, is another example of it is, is I have an attribute for some, some reason. Like, so this, this particular one now is the audio file. There's like a, a custom button on click trigger to play of the audio file. So then I have a custom attribute on that button that is audio button equals, and it's the slug of the, of the, the CMS content. And then the audio file has the attribute audio, 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 or something like it is the audio player. You would say, find the ID of audio button when the audio, when the button with the ID audio button is clicked, find the audio player with the ID audio player and play that audio. But what I'm doing is I'm adapting that piece of code that says when the button with the custom attribute um, audio, uh, audio button is clicked, find the audio player with the custom attribute audio player and if their value is the same then play that audio player and since the slug of both the audio player attribute and the audio button attribute are the same 
it means that you just have to that that audio player will work with the Webflow CMS, and it's it's infinite it's because the way you would have to work, write that in JavaScript is you would have to say ID equals one, ID equals two. And I suppose you could do that with IDs as well, but you're running the risk of having, um, with an ID, like you really shouldn't have the same ID on one page. Like it, it, you shouldn't really kind of trigger some uh, errors in your JavaScript sometimes. So that's why I've gone with, with uh, why I use custom attributes. Yeah, um, and I guess I guess going back to the simplicity of it, it, it it's um, it, it it's like a, a key in a lock, isn't it? I suppose you know you have you have the lock and the key, and when the key matches the lock, the thing happens, the door opens, and that's what we're doing. So CSS is actually I just had a quick look. It's a, it's called a global attribute. So you know class equals yeah. whatever you've. Background color blue, say for example, you might have called a class, or, or class equals yeah. card, and then what it does is it looks in the CSS and finds your um, CSS, which says, um, you know, it says what class is called card. Okay, I found the card, and in the brackets, you've put all your CSS related to that card. And likewise, what you're doing is just you're kind of writing your own rule sets essentially, and you're saying, I'm going to create a key value pair so i'm going to create the key which is class and the value which is whatever the class name is and you're going i'm going to create a, a key that says t-shirt color and i'm going to give it a load there's a load of values and when the key and the the value match what, what you're looking for do do something and you're right it's just, it becomes this like hook it's a kind of hook that you can use then programmatically um, to look for stuff, and when it, it when it matches, do something. If it doesn't match, don't do anything. And and that's that's the magic of it. Because as you said, it's like once you know that principle, the the reason you use classes, IDs, data attributes, uh, on clicks, you know, custom attributes, it just it opens your mind, and then you can understand why you do it. And once you understand why you do it, you go, well, I could use it for this and I could use it for this mm. and I can use it for, you know, CSS can be hooked onto custom attributes. JavaScript can, can use custom attributes. Um, yeah, just the way I, I explained there. Yeah, yeah and, it's, it's but, just, but just brilliant. On the, um, just on, on the thing there, you were saying, like, like you are completely correct. Like if you look at, if you inspect your HTML, it's class equals inverted commas card um, and then it's, you know, a equals or like href equals something. So they are the uh, custom attribute looks the exact same as that when you inspect the code. It's your custom attribute equals inverted commas your value. Um, but the thing that when I like whatever five years ago, if you look at a lot of, or even now you look at a lot of Webflow JavaScript, and they target the class, which is fine. It will do its job, but you you run the risk. As particularly in Webflow, when the, there's so many different like class naming conventions, and there's a huge um, emphasis on custom classes when you go a certain, you you go a certain amount of classes deep into a, into um, building something, that there's a big risk that you're you're breaking something because you, you know now this card is no longer a global card but it's a product card, so you change it to product card, and now your your JavaScript will no longer work. You can also use IDs. But for some reason, Webflow injects custom IDs into a lot of places, like it's particularly with forms. Like I've often put in a, an, an ID in a form and then a couple of days later, I'm like, why is that not working? And then you realize that your your ID is now like WF-form- what, what you have written, like the custom ID. Uh, so the most stable approach that I have found is using custom attributes for that additional functionality. Um, and I, this is getting like, I, I could talk, I could literally, this is why I was like, we should do two parts of this, but I could talk for hours on this because like I'm, I'm using like custom, the custom element plus custom attributes to send data from Webflow using webhooks to things like make and Zapier to store that data in a database and then return that data with HTML onto the Webflow front end. 
so like it it's so cool like and and that's kind of what wiz are doing as well but without it being like a html thing it's they're doing more like a javascript a, a json approach to things the javascript kind of like rendering and loading but but it's all true it is it is all true custom attributes and then like I, again i'm I, i'm talking too much here but like the shit that you did yesterday like i've never done that that's so cool like the the class based custom attributes or the style based custom attributes that's well, that, awesome well. that that's the thing i think the the brilliant thing about custom attributes is the complexity level that we want to deal with in a, in a webflow environment and we all know that webflow's there to and it's sold it's not sold as much as it used to be on this point but it used to be sold a lot on it's simple get started great for marketing teams you know it's visual all this kind of stuff and we know that that does the platform a bit of a disservice in in terms of it makes it sound easy but also it makes it sound a little bit like drag and drop square spacey you know um and you're obviously you know, you're building a web app here the whiz guys give you the capabilities to do that you know the app setter guys the the member stack and if you look at hcmx it's slightly more abstracted i guess from a, um, a product point of view but you can boil it down you're you're at that end of the scale where you're dealing with complexities and you're using it really for really powerful stuff what i what i showed yesterday with the the components or webflow component was you can utilize data attributes in your webflow components to make it easier for your your marketing team or your um less dev centric webflow team to utilize data attributes for the power that they're available for so you know the example i gave was a theme so if you put a data attribute of the the key is theme and it equals a value that could be di dark light moody red like happy sad or it doesn't matter what the value is because then in in my css then i put in some attributes that change elements on the page based on what that value is and then you can link that up webflow of of put this in you can link that up to a, a field in your component so now i have a single component so it's built once and i then it's it's a light so it's it's got a white background it's got black text it's got um black colored buttons so it works and then now the component if the the client puts this component on another page and just changes that input from light to dark that is goes through to the data attribute that section becomes a theme equals dark and then the css rules that are targeting that boom it becomes dark background white text white buttons and it's just like it seem it feels so simple on the front end and the client mostly won't know what's going on other than they will have a massive smile on their face because you've just allowed them to switch between light and dark or red and blue or you know whatever themes you want to put in there now you bring variables into the equation you can power it up even more but it's so as you said like it's it's amazing because you're at the you're at one end really stretching and i i, I mean stretching in the the sense of complexity but you're doing some very clever stuff and very complex stuff and i just did a very simple thing but they're both using the same is it technology or, or like the same attributes to get the thing it's done? It's the same and, yeah. way of thinking though. It's the same mindset. It's the same, same mindset. Yeah. But it's just same way it, of thinking about it. And it's, it's something that if you get your head around, it's, it's brilliant for a one pager static site all the way through to a web app. And it, it's like CSS, you know, don't, don't, when you're looking at Webflow, don't say, Oh, it's Webflow and this is what it can do dive beneath the surface and as you said like it's html it's css it's javascript add data attributes which is a part of html but add that to your little i need to know a little bit more and once you get your head around it you go whoa 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 what can i do with this damn i can i can do all sorts i'm a and, and that's what building should be about it's about learning new techniques which will then allow you to deliver for the client more value more value going back to the pricing means you can charge more happy days <laughs> nice <laughs>
but but just on just on like you said that that was I actually people can we pause and see a, the skill set of bringing that that was like you know a comedy skit like those original comedy skits where they start off with a joke and an hour later they finish on the same joke <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> No, I, 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 I want, I'm, I'm going to show you that clip to my wife because my wife um, is a running joke. Excuse the pun. It's a run, running joke that I um, normally start jokes with the punchline and end with the... So <laughs> I'm very happy that um, you made that analogy there. So um, anyway. <laughs> but, the, um, but just... I, I just want to kind of say the, the complexity of, of something like HTMX and using HTMX and Webflow it's it's not as as complex as you made it out to be there like there's I have two videos there's two videos on our youtube channel on how htmx can solve webflow limitations in terms of like the cms limitations tabs and nested items and you can see how i use custom attributes the majority of the time i'm using them the custom attributes inside an embed so we're kind of moving in a slightly different direction there but it's the same thing i'm typing out the custom attributes as a put in putting them into the custom attributes fields and it's it's um resulting in in um solving a solution solving a problem and and like that's what the fin suite attributes are is that they're bits of javascript that you put into the custom attributes inputs and provided you put it all together correctly you've got a a solution um now with, with all of these things, there is annoyances and limitations to the custom attributes. Um, like the other day, I, w I wanted to have an input field, but I wanted it to not be editable. So I put in the read-only attribute into the custom attribute. You push publish your website and Webflow removes it. And it's really, really annoying. But then I put that same piece of HTML into a custom embed and it works. So there's something baked in to Webflow that removes certain attributes, like you can't use on click. Um, so you can't write an on click and have like a custom, a very simple one, like the uh, an on click for a pop up of a Calendly, a calendar. You can't have that on click equals um, return Calendly and make it pop up. You can't use that in custom attributes, but you can do that in custom embeds. That I don't know what the reason is for it. My solution for that is using hx on. There's a hx on click function, which isn't doesn't get removed. It does the exact same thing. It's an on click functionality, on click attribute, and it triggers whatever little bit of JavaScript you've written. So that's really frustrating <laughs> that they have those things. It's also like um, you're able to put in um, like uh, the what's that oh, when you've got like your images loading like preload and um yeah the lazy loading. The words? yeah say that again the lazy loading lazy loading that's yeah. right you can you can use lazy loading in custom attributes so this example of like a, a cms based slider and you've got your hero image and then you've got two or three images off the page so if you run, if you just leave that as like you want that first um, image to load really quickly, but if you've all the, on the same kind of um, preload, you're going to get a poor lightbox score. But you can use a custom attribute to make those other two lazy and pull it from the Webflow CMS, and that's awesome. But then you can't use source. You can't. There, there's certain tags that you just can't use, and then. But then the custom attribute has like evolved from that where you can now use certain tags um, like source, which is great. So you can source MP3s, you can source videos, you can source uh, images. But then at the same time, they don't allow, they allow you make a button, but they don't allow you have the on click function um, to write, to put like embed some basic JavaScript functionality into your HTML. So it's awesome, but then there's some weird little edge cases that are just there for, they must be there for legacy. It's just so deep in the code of the original Webflow product that it's probably too too much work to go remove that, those like things that cause yeah. errors. Yeah. But then you're, the, the workaround is you can use a custom embed, which is fine. Kind of annoys me that it's got the, 
Um, whenever you have a custom embed, you have to put a class in the custom embed and then you're putting classes on the inside. It's kind of annoying, but you know, it works really well as well. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting you bring that up because I think maybe we'll, we'll have to bring this to it. We're, we're hitting an, an hour mark right now, but the the I guess the the yeah at the moment, and I touched on it before. Like Web Webflow, we're pushing the it's easy to use, it's a simple, and maybe the Webflow conference introduced us to a different strategy. Was you know we're going to be the place where developers can can live and breathe and excel. Um, and what we're talking about now is stuff that developers do you know, use on a daily basis. It's kind of bread and butter. Um, but the platform itself, you know, obviously we've got things like components. We've got props. If you if you know with components, it's got props, and that's got a little of a bit of a nod to React. You've got DevLink that is they've gone a little bit quiet on, um, but there are there are signs that they're going to open things up a little bit more to developer techniques developer centric techniques but at the moment yeah you're right they they just have a little edge where they they're not going full full blast you can do anything you want for some reason and i don't know if that's because they want to bake it into the ux of the platform before you're allowed to do it or as you said there's just some there's just too much legacy code beneath the surface that allows them to do it but you know custom elements was a big step forward a huge step forward um it does so custom elements plus attributes awesome <laughs> yeah and but it's just those little edge cases which which sort of make it feel like it's not quite there yet um but thankfully you can go into a custom embed and do what the hell you want and that's true know, like it's so. it's one of those things that the custom embed is, is it provides loads of flexibility yeah and it makes no odds to what you're doing. Like it, it allows you um, enhance the customization. It's just, I've just got this weird thing when I look at the HTML after I've, I've published it and you can see that it's written as custom embed, you know, it's class W called embed or something. Yeah. And it just, that just annoys me more from uh, an aesthetic point of view as opposed to anything else. Not that I don't like the custom embed. I love the custom embed. Um, well, it does. It does mean you have a sort of you have a div wrapper around your code when actually you just want it nice and flat, and you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which um, means then you're you know you're kind of going you're giving the embed a class so that it does something usually probably to fit the the parent of that div. Yeah. And and then you're you're building your um your button for example separately and making sure that it looks good on Webflow and then you're you're injecting that code into the embed. Um, the the thing that it, the, the big risk again with that is that if you change your class somewhere down the line or another developer changes your class, that code will break. Yeah, it doesn't that's, fit that's in meant the system. To be one of the, yeah. the, the powerful things of Webflow is that that code, you change it one place, it changes all over, so it shouldn't break. You you know, you're, you're very passionate about the data attributes. Um, this is brilliant. I wanted to get my cool shit in as well before we hit the. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you know I am the host, but I also have some stuff to bring to the party here. This is why I was saying, man. This 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 was two two big topics. The topics uh, were too yeah, big. Yeah, don't worry, we've got time. This one this one's an easy one. Okay, so, and I found out this today. So, um, I thought it was you know, oh, there was a, a cartoon. It was called uh, what was it called? Count Dracula, back in the day. Called Count Dracula. Anyway, it was this thing about Draculas. They were they were ducks and they were living in Transylvania. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was listening to a podcast this morning around HTMX, and they mentioned the word transclusion. And I, for some reason, these ducks, these Dracula ducks, appeared in my head. Like, Tran Transylvania transclusion. What? So I went on and I found out. I tried to find out what the hell transclusion means. It sounds like a very fancy word. Um, I did a quick YouTube video. Hey, everyone, we got a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I did a quick video on trying to explain what it was. But basically, it explains a lot and it, and it kind of dovetails off, off the back of your data attributes. It's, it's where you take content from one document or thing and reference it in another document or thing. So... You know, it can be used across, you know, you can do it in um, Notion is, is 
Notion's all about transclusion, you know, Notion pages reference other Notion pages and you bring data in, um, you know, an embed of a, twi a tweet into your document is a transclusion. You're taking mm -hmm. something from one place and, and putting it in another place. Um, well, what it means is a tweet exists in one place and lots of people can put it on lots of different pages all over the place. But anyway, when it comes down to the Webflow world, it's like, how do, what is this? And I just thought, oh, it's components. Like components are a form of transclusion. You create something somewhere and then you put it in lots of other places um, on, on the website. Now, it, it's slightly different, but it, it's kind of the same. Um, but with HTMX, obviously, transclusion is part and parcel of that. And you mentioned about page load times, and they used it in the podcast example, was um, if you had like a really heavy data-hungry um, graph, for example, you could have it loaded somewhere else and use HTMX to transclude, trans transclude, trans include maybe, <laughs> um, that piece of information onto the page. So the page would load and paint and you'd get all the lovely paint so the user would get this really quick, punchy experience. And then by the time they get down to the graph, this really heavy graph, it would HMX will have transcluded that from another place and in. And it's happening on another page and another page and another page. And it's mm. it's such a powerful concept again where and I think we'll probably dive into it a lot more on our YouTube videos um, where we go into how HCMX and Webflow is is almost a perfect partner in a way mm. that it's it's a perfect partner for a lot of back end systems. You know, you can, that's the beauty of HCMX. It's not this sort of really complex monolith. It can be used. Um, it can be used for what it's good at. It's really nimble, but it can be used so powerfully in Webflow. And obviously, you're using it. So we're going to do that. But yeah, I just thought um, if if anyone just takes away the fact that transclusion isn't just a fancy word that we don't use every day, um, but it is actually relevant and you're probably using it every day in your Webflow builds when you use components. And yeah, that was my, my cool shit. So um, I don't know if you want to end on that. You know, the coolest shit will end on the coolest shit, you know? Yeah, that is pretty cool. I'm just like mind developing in my head <laughs> using like a i don't know the hx load trigger or whatever like there's there's so many ways to do that and even through like button clicks or uh, that, but that that's actually what's probably that's exactly what's been done on the um on the cms tabs solution that is on the youtube channel exactly you're, do, you're doing exactly that in the in the in a different part of the website yeah so um like you know what, what's the um i didn't even game? i didn't even realize that was a word that's a great word transclusion <laughs> yeah and try try and get it into client meetings clients will be bowled over Confused. You, can, <laughs> you can double your hourly rate by uh using that word because they'll think you're you're cleverer because than you really are because it will take you so long to explain it <laughs> yeah no, I, this is a this is a side joke, and it it was a it's a, a little bit of an unfortunate joke, but at the time it was. Um, I used to work for um, a advertising agency, and we used to work for Orange, and we went along for our monthly meeting to present the results of our advertising, and um, there was three of us from my agency and three from the creative agency, and we used to meet up and have a chin wag in the. Um, in the foyer before the client came down and picked us up. And one of the things we do was we'd play a game of trying to mention a word or a set of words in the meeting. And you'd kind of get, you know, we just want to spice it up a bit. Anyway, it's like in super troopers when the guy kept saying meow, when he pulled over the kids, I, I so, don't know. So meow, you were driving meow. At yes. It, you basically, you get points for mentioning stuff. Okay. And on this instance, it was, we had all woken up in London and uh, Michael Jackson had passed away. So we, you know, everyone's sort of taken this thing in like, geez, like this is, this is, this is big. Um, for various reasons, it's big. And, you know, anyway, we won't, we won't touch on the Michael Jackson saga, but we decided in the foyer to see how many Michael Jackson 
uh, song names we could get into the meeting. My Michael Jackson song catalog is pretty limited. I would recognize the tune, but I, I couldn't tell you the name of the tune. My so boss, it's just the whole meeting bad? <laughs> on, no, honestly, my boss... He, that that he got, point is in black and white. <laughs> yes. No, he did, no, this is it. He was on fire. I think every other sentence had a song title in there. You know, this is a thriller of a campaign. <laughs> it was. <Brilliant. laughs> I think. I think we counted back. I think we counted like. I think he got in twelve song titles into this meeting. The client didn't know what was going on. The rest of us were in stitches. So, the point being, go and take um, transclusion and try and get it into your client meetings, and see what their response is. Anyway. <laughs> I will try that, um, <laughs> but it's not going to be as um, subtle <laughs> or as creative. No, and as funny. Cool. No, so uh, and no one else will be in, in on the joke. So you just have to laugh, chuckle to yourself <laughs> under the desk. Yes. So, anyway, on that note, right? We'll um, we'll see you right, next man. week. Talk to you later. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Good bye. Luck, bye. 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 Bye.